guys, Brian Erickson here. Uh, gonna bring you guys another tutorial. Um, this one here is gonna be on the person of interest effect, uh, the face tracking effect that you see in all of the cutaway scenes usually. Um, not too difficult, but I'm gonna show you two separate ways to do it, uh, as you saw in the intro. And uh, hopefully this will make sense for you guys, and then you guys can run with it and make bigger and better things. So, here we go. Um, we're gonna pull up motion, and um, I'm gonna just select a normal motion project. I'm gonna go with a 20 second time code here um, and then I shot at 24 well let's do that 23.98 frames per second um, so we're just gonna open this as a normal sequence and I've already put together all this stuff and I'm gonna put this here in the link uh, link in the description to download the person of interest reticle that I created here if you can see it right here um, it'll be uh, whoa that is really big uh, but anyway so this is the reticle that is going to be it's in like a 1080p by uh, setting uh, I designed it in motion here I don't have Photoshop currently um, so this is just what I had to build it with so hopefully this works for you guys um, download link is in the description again um, so we're gonna pull up here gonna put in our first clip um, put in here it's gonna I'm gonna name this source now, for the first clip here, we're going to do some motion tracking, and then on the second clip, what we're going to do is we're going to do some keyframing. So, um, skip ahead if you already know all this motion tracking stuff, but I will show you some other cool things that you can do with it if you want to. Um, this will be showing all the other stuff, like uh, adding the video effects to it and everything like that. So, um, we'll take the clip, and we're first going to go to Library, Behaviors, Basic Motion, oh, sorry, Motion Tracking, and then Analyze Motion. We'll pull that down here, put that on clip one. So now we have ourselves a tracker. Now I think I'm going to put it on this guy right over here. Um, he has a very pink shirt there that'll really stick out against everything else. So I'm going to move him ahead a little bit so he's not behind the trees there because I can cut around that. So we'll put that tracker right there. So we'll see in the inspector here. And so you can see that there's a tracker preview, everything like that. Like I've told you before in my other tracking videos, um, if you don't know how to really do motion tracking uh, in Motion 5, um, look at my motion tracking video and that should help you guys out a lot so I'm first gonna let this analyze when we'll skip ahead and then um, uh, we'll get back to it alright now that that clip is analyzed uh, we got a really good solid track if you guys can see there uh, so it's really really nice looking um, followed him pretty well and if you guys remember from any of the cutscenes and everything like that um, the it really doesn't always stick with them just straight. It always is kind of like wibbly and wobbly. But anyway, you can add that to yourself if you want to mess with the keyframes and stuff like that individually. But um, then we're just going to go back here to File Browser, pull in our person of interest. Um, but we're going to put that into a new group here. Um, we're going to call this Reticle. I probably spelled that wrong, but that doesn't matter. So we're going to then take this, go back to Library, uh, motion tracking match move throw that on the person of interest reticle um, now I only want it to really start there so let's p click on this oops I'm an idiot uh, also one big thing is make sure that your everything's in order here um, place this on top of the other pro um, source clip or else it'll be sitting behind it the whole time uh, shift click on the bottom corner here to keep your perspective of this right because if I do it without doing it it'll like whoa be able to do all these crazy things but at shift click I'll be able to keep it nice and normal so um, a normal aspect and everything like that so we're gonna pull this down make it nice and small and throw it here on this guy so then that's fairly easy nothing big of a deal we click out here on match move click inspector uh, it has our source right here so we're just gonna click on this drag over to our source and then move this back again over to our guy. Let's see how that tracked. I like it. Really nice and simple. Stuck with it. So that looks all nice and dandy, but let's throw some text onto it because we have no clue who this guy is and what he could be doing that has garnered the interest of the computer. So let's just take it and add in. Uh, oops, I did not mean to put in a particle in there. All right, uh, throw that back off. All right, now we're gonna go back here and click on our. Um, well, let's do. Mm, now let's make a new group out of this one. Um, now we can throw it on here. That'll work. 
So then we'll just uh, add some text. Uh, let's say person unknown. Oops, I am spelling unknown wrong. Unknown. Known. There we go. So we're going to take that and then, uh, oops, I'm going to drag this out to be the length of our clip here. Um, I'm going to take it back. Put that up here. All right. So then, person unknown. We're going to go to it and bring up our font size here. If you can't tell, I'm a big fan of the font bank gothic. Don't know why, but it's pretty awesome looking. So we're going to take this then um, and then apply or copy and paste it onto here, our match move copy. So then it'll have the same effects as whoa previously stated. I don't know why it's doing it like this, but anyway. So then you'll see sticks right there with our person unknown. And, you know, just for fun, let's create a generator that has some let's do random numbers oops again I for keep forgetting to make this the length of the clip but random numbers uh, we'll copy and paste although I already had it copied whatever uh, there's our number generator all the way over here I want you yeah I don't know why it's doing this to me but you know what whatever and then let's do something weird with um, the text generator here let's let's make it format hexadecimal that sounds like fun let's start it at some random number here eh, some random number that I'll go up to there let's generate something really really fast have to go through a bunch of stuff there um, That'll work. Um, and then that'll work. That'll work. That'll work. Um, now we want to bring up our text speed just just slight uh, text size just a bit because truthfully it's just hard to see. Um, so then, yeah, I like that right about there. But you know what? That'll work for where, what we want. Um, you can obviously line it up yourself a little bit easier later. But. Um, hmm that'll work. No, that won't work. That looks pretty bad. But anyway, you get the idea. Um, they throw that in there. And then you'll have, if you click off of that, you'll have random number generator that's just saying like, ooh, this guy has something to strange to do with numbers. So there you go. Um, and so then you can do anything like that, and you can obviously animate the text that you have in there. Um, anything weird like that. Um, and now let's go on to the next clip that um, we have in store and then um, I'll also show you on the next clip how to make it look more like a security camera now here's the next setup this is another uh, high spot off of one of the buildings at school that I took a video off of uh, we're gonna again we have our source clip here And then we're going to not do some uh, motion tracking this time. What we're going to end up doing is we're going to take a person of interest logo, um, import it as a new group. Let's call it uh, radical. Might have spelled it wrong again. Who cares? Uh, shift click, scale it down. I'm going to follow this guy down here in the blue. Um, why, you ask? Because he looks awesome. Um, so we're just going to take it like this. Um, no big deal, um, but now he's going to start moving, and there's nothing that we have right now because we're not motion tracking him at all. So, what, and also what we're going to realize here is he comes along is he's going to move behind that uh, pillar, so it's going to be really hard to, again, track him. So this is one of those times where you can't really track him. So what we're going to do is we're back here, we've got the reticle right on him. Now, um, what we're going to do is we're going to start keyframing, and we're going to keyframe the location of this box as we go along. So right now I'm going to place a keyframe um, and what we need to do is we need to go into inspector um, position here we need to set a new uh, keyframe for position for the reticle and so then we move on a couple frames here and then we move it to follow right on his back there so then we move it again move it to follow on his back again
So now we've reached the point where he's starting to get behind the other um, dude here, or behind the wall. So what we have to do is basically have to estimate where he actually is as he follows behind it. So then we just click and grab, and he, I can see his legs right about there, so we'll put him there. And then his body pops up again. Put him right, oh. Put him, put that right back on his back again. back on his back again oh. you have to be careful sometimes you will accidentally grab keyframes that you don't want to mess with and everything like that so anyway there we go and we've got it and if you'll see it follows along with him quite nicely and um, obviously it won't stick with him perfectly but it stays with him very nicely and um, it creates that more stable look that uh, the computer is more self-aware than just a little analytical program that's analyzing where he, where his position is. So um, we can do all this, and let's just show. I'm going to show you a quick couple tips to uh, for making it look like this is a security camera. Now you can do a lot of things to make it look like a security camera, but uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some color correction to our footage. Um, so we got to go to. Now I'm in the wrong setting here. Color correction. And first of all, I want to take hue and saturation, throw that here onto our clip, and I want to bring down the saturation all the way. Because most security cameras, obviously, are black and white. Um, then the next thing I'm going to want to do is, because this is white and this is going to be black and white, I want to bring down the brightness of all the highlights and stuff like that. So I'm going to take the color correction, brightness, bring that down a little bit too. So then that'll add a little bit more of a, this is really eh, weird looking. Let's bring down the mix a little bit too. I like that. There we go. And let's see, is there another color, color correction I want to add to it? Colorize. Um, no, that's looking pretty good for what I want. You could tint it with a little bit of a blue because that's what a, um, some of the things look like uh, when they are like barely color corrected thing. Oh, hey, I've got the keyframes on. My bad. Um, delete keyframes. There you go. So this is just how it should look here. So then um, uh, let's also here we'll go into uh, throw on some stylize here. Go down to stylize and I'm gonna add in bad TV. So bad TV is also is also really really useful. Oh another keyframe here I didn't get rid of. Anyway um, so bad TV is really nice but unfortunately if you see it, it does this like waviness sort of thing and roll I don't want roll so we're gonna take that off uh, bad TV I want to put you down underneath here um, then static I want a lot of static so we'll put that right there um, saturate no I want it to be desaturated oh Cool, I didn't know that. You could do a saturate thing here, and then you wouldn't even have to add in hue and saturation. So we can just pull that right off. Um, so then, scan line brightness. Uh, that's another thing you could do, some glare sort of thing there. Now, that makes it a lot harder to see the white down here, so I'm going to pull that down. There we go. I like that. Um, number of scan lines. I'm going to make that kind of mm, right about there. That looks about good. It's all personal taste on how you guys want to do this, so you really got to just figure out what you want to do. Um, so uh, should I add some noise? Again, this the reason I'm saying this is that you really need to do everything the way you would want to do it. Um, so let's just see if we can add some noise to it. Now that's way, way, way too much. Um, there we go. Let's. There we go. I like subtract a little bit better. No, that's not what I wanted. I wanted. And there we go. All right. So then you've got that nice grainy look. Now obviously it looks really bad here in the render preview because this isn't full quality but um, it looks really nice for the, how this is but the one last thing that really sells the effect a little bit more that you really want to make sure that you add on is a generator. Come over here to generators, click generator uh, whoop, text generator and you want date time. So uh, take this and throw this up here making it look all that much more official and you know what now that I look at this I really don't like how many scan lines I've got in there I want to pull out some of those scan lines so let's make the scan lines a lot smaller there we go I like that alright so then we've got this 
nice and grainy and we got a time um, and you can obviously add more stuff on there to make it very a lot more personal to what you guys want to do um, so anyway this is basically the entire tutorial on how to do this person of interest effect um, please drop a comment in the description like favorite all those things and make sure to add a video description of any project that you use that use this same sort of effect I love to see the work that other people have done that I have helped to influence um, if you guys are ever in the well if you're ever bored just send me an email uh, or on Twitter those should be popping up right here and um, just have a great day everyone